Welcome to the QB School. Today we're looking at seeing ghosts. What the heck does that mean? Sam Darnold, say it ain't so. We're going to break it down, see exactly what the heck happened to Sam versus the Patriots. This will be a great video. We're going to look at all the turnovers. Should be interesting. Lots to learn from. I'm excited. I'm JT O'Sullivan, and welcome to the QB School. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about seeing ghosts and people just putting Sam Darnold on blast with Adam Gase is, first of all, uh, Adam is a friend, coached me multiple different stops, have a lot of respect for Adam. I will, And the next thing I want to say is just kind of a precursor is every quarterback has said this. Every quarterback. And if they haven't said it, they're not self-aware enough to know when they're seeing ghosts. It's a common term. People putting him on blast all over the place. Lots of people who've never played quarterback, especially at that level, but really any level, you have seen ghosts. I've seen ghosts. I remember seeing ghosts in high school. I remember seeing ghosts in college. Definitely see, saw ghosts in the pros. And all that means is you are seeing things that aren't there. So you're expecting a blitz and then they don't blitz. That's what it means. You're seeing ghosts. You're seeing things. You're seeing coverages that aren't there. So you just have to see the field better. It is not a butt fumble. It is not the end of a career. Seeing ghosts is part of playing quarterback. It's part of getting better. You see it all the time. Now, most times people aren't mic'd up on Monday night football, but again, that's just part of the deal. Seeing ghosts is a common term that coaches use for players that players use within themselves and that quarterbacks that are self-aware use to better understand that they just need to slow down and see the field better. So we're going to dive into the to kind of the details of each one of these plays. Look at what the film says, the all 22, this should be great. Let's get it started. All right. Let's see what the film says here about seeing ghosts. Sam Darnold. We're going to talk about the details of this play specifically, but there's all sorts of bad. All sorts of bad. We see the redirect right here. Sam Darnold comes out. He's pointing to the right. He's pointing to the linebacker. Here he comes. They don't pick him up. Now, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, you're supposed to throw a more accurate ball, no doubt about it. Be nice not to throw off your back foot. But if he makes a more accurate ball, we live to fight another day. He doesn't. Sky mails it right to the corner. I'm going to show all sorts of different ways this could have been a lot better. Now, obviously, it's a lot easier to be able to sit here with a clicker, replay, be able to point out exactly what it is, but he does a lot right here. Yeah, the throw is what makes it a disaster, but the offensive line doesn't help. The right guard doesn't help. You can't come back here, make a redirect, and then have the right guard blocked down on the defensive tackle. It just can't happen. Now, you sure you can't sky mail it, but I think there's a better throw in there too. Now, the footwork bailing away, it's part of playing against zero pressure. But being able to make good decisions and not throw balls right into people's chests that helps too. Now, again, just so we see exactly what's going on, he's redirecting right there. So Sam Darnold's redirecting right here. We see this point. He's pointing. He's changing the protection. So now everybody knows, the offensive line should know, we're going to this guy. So these five guys should be sliding right here to this guy. Well, he ends up coming free. So that's how is that possibly on Sam Darnold? Then also we come back and they have a free runner running through the A and B gap on the other way too. Now, I will say... And I've been around Adam many different stops. I'm going to tell you, you can come out here and throw this little out against zero, but you're going to get collisioned. There's going to be a big collision right there. Now, a more accurate ball, this is probably a completion. But again, the better play, and I've done it with Adam before, with Gase before, is to come out and you know these corners are going to sit, especially New England. They're going to squat. They know you're in zero, that they're in zero. They're anticipating a quick throw. You come out here and you run this concept a little out and a go, and you throw this thing down the field right there. That's the throw, in my opinion. Now, is it easy to do? No. Have I seen it done? Yeah, many times. It's definitely doable right there. There it is. You come out, you block it up. You don't have those two free runners ridiculous through the A and B gaps or through the B gaps, and you take a shot. That's how you get people out of zero. Now, we'll see it from the back end. It's even more obvious. Again, Sam Darnold comes out. We're going to go to the guy, to 58, right there. We're pointing to him. This is where we're going. It's as obvious as you can possibly make it. We're going right here. That's the direction. I want to slide right to this guy. So these three guys, really simple. These three guys are going to these three guys. It's math. Protection is just math. So this side should be taken care of. These three guys are squashed with these three guys. Now on the back end, we got four guys for three guys. All sorts of bad. Okay, but one of these guys right here, tight end, he's an eligible receiver. So one of these four guys 
is going to have to cover this tight end if he runs out. So really, they can only bring six. We got six blocking. Now they could add on a seventh, and that's what zero is. But we want that seventh defender to run the wide edge, to have to run all the way out here. We definitely don't want a linebacker type running through the B gap, untouched with a left tackle setting to block a DB type. It's just poor protection. It's unsound, and it gets people hurt, and it's all sorts of bad. So watch it happen here. We're going to go to the right. First thing we're going to watch is the right guard. Right guard needs to go out. He goes down. Bad. Done. We're in trouble. Free runner through the B gap. Now let's look to the left side. Left tackle, 75. He need to block down on the linebacker. He blocks the DB. It just can't happen. 84 is doing it right. You see 84 coming down. He's going to take the DB. We're going to have the 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 wide rusher free here. Again, this is this is pass pro 101. All these guys are coming. This guy is green dogging, meaning if the tight end comes out, he's going to cover him. But right here, this tackle needs to be down. Right here, tight end down, and then we're going to have the wide rusher free. And that's the only guy who should be free. And we should have a great opportunity to throw a big play down the field. Now, you have to execute it, obviously. But again, is this on Sam Darnold? Like, the throw is the decision. But again, you can't have free runners through the B-gap. It, it just can't happen. Any level of football let alone Monday Night Football against the best team and one of the best defenses ever in the history of football, probably. So that's your first, my bad. Now we come out again. Now here's the strip sack. Now again, I don't necessarily love this formation, but this is zero as zero as zero gets. Nobody in the middle of the field. Easy to see. Booger McFarland's all over this. We come back. What are we going to do? There's only so many ways you can do it. Now we block it up correctly, and the quarterback doesn't see it. Now, you absolutely have to get the ball out of your hand. We'll see it from the back end, but you got all sorts of options. When everybody's off like this, birds on a fence, call this usually, these guys are just birds on a fence. Where are you going to take your shot? We can run anything we want. Flat route, quick slant, anything. But you got to get the ball out of your hands. You got to know where the free runner is. It looks like he has no idea where the free runner is. Obviously, the ball security is another issue. But again, this is just, this is blocked up correctly. Now you have to have the scheme that we'll see from the all 22 and the decision making to get the ball out of your hands. So one time we're having multiple free runners through the next time we block it up correctly, but we can't get the right decision from the quarterback. So you have to have all those things tethered together. That's why it's so hard to play against zero. Nobody can believe it. So again, they're going to have it blocked up correctly. Here it comes. We got it. They're going to block him. We're blocking down. It's called a squeeze. Sliding to the left. There it is. We know where the wide rusher is. Now we block it perfectly. Got the wide rusher. I personally would prefer the wide rusher to have to go around a tight end. It makes it even wider as opposed to around a tackle. But whatever. If you're sliding this way, you live with it. It's math. Six on six right here. We got the free rusher right here. Well, he's looking. He looks like he has no idea what he's looking for. You got to get the ball out of your hand playing quarterback in this situation. Again, free rusher right there. Get the ball out of your hands. You got the little out to the left. Drift. He does a great job drifting. That's a nice job drifting. Now you just got to get the ball out of your hand. You got to throw it. It's open to the left. Throw that little quick out. All sorts of all sorts of bad happens when you hold on to the ball. Free runners running at you. But again, it's got to be tethered to pass pro, tethered to the concept, tethered to the decision making by the quarterback. It's not just, oh, I'm seeing ghosts out there. There's no ghost. This is a full on scary dude coming at you. This is not a ghost. This is how you see ghosts right here. You have all sorts of, you don't understand pass pro. But again, that's perfect. That is blocked up perfectly. You have to throw the out right there. It's open. Throw it right here. They're off. There's your little hot route. Throw it. It's just that simple. There is no other read. There is no other, we're going to change the play. It's right there. It's open. Throw it. Set your feet. Throw it. Bail away from the guy who's going to be free. Again, I think we get a hitch down here to the bottom of the screen. But again, they have it blocked up perfectly right here, as opposed to the last time where there were two huge errors. Birds on a fence, four people across, cover zero, nobody in the middle of the field. Do a great job at the quarterback bailing away from where the, the free runner's coming from, but then you got to throw it. So you got two options. You can throw the hitch down here to the bottom of the screen, or you can throw the little quick out. Either way, got to throw it. Can't hold on to the ball. Oftentimes, you'll hear quarterback coaches say, throw it into the pressure. So that means you got a hitch here, and you got a little quick out right here. Well, the free runner is right here, so you either want to bail this way and throw the quick out, or bail this way and get a big boy throw out here to the hitch. 
But either way, you got to get the ball out of your hands. You can't hold on to the ball. And then obviously the ball security, whole nother issue. But again, this is blocked up. This is this is not on the offensive line. They do a great job seeing it. Now again, I probably philosophically would want to turn away from the tight end. But if you're going to go to him, great. As long as you block it up and you know where your hot is. He definitely knows where his hot is. You can see him bail here. We, people who watch this channel know that verse zero, verse pressure, you want to bail when you know where the free runner is coming from. But you got to throw it. Right here, you got to throw it. He does a great job bailing. Throw it. That's it. That's all there is to it. There is no other answer. Those are the answers that you're that that you have to the test right there. But you got to be able to pull the trigger. All sorts of bad. Luckily, this thing comes back with a lucky leg touch. But again, second disaster. Now here we go. Now we really start seeing ghosts. So we come up. We're going to throw just a punt down the middle of the field. But again, free runners. We don't know where we're hot from. We're not blocking this correctly. We'll see from the back end. They're not bringing. Full-on crazy pressure. It is zero, but they are not bringing it like the last time. But again, not setting your feet, not understanding where we're hot from, having pass pro issues. All those things go together to make a quarterback have just a brutal night. So we'll see it here. We got set. This is seven-man protection. To me, Le'Veon Bell needs to come across here and save the quarterback. He looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. Looks like he's got like a weird juke move or something going on in the backfield. Oftentimes, the running back has what they call scan. So what I mean by that, I'll show from the all 22, but again, he's going to be right here. You can see he's looking, he sees something over here, but instead of coming back, whatever his normal read would be. So if let's just hypothetically say he's out here, this is his one read. Well, his two, if that guy doesn't come is usually to scan and scan means come back and take the hit off the quarterback. So if one of these guys were to come and you get hit with a four week or some sort of DB pressure backside, your running back comes across and takes the hit off the quarterback so you don't get blasted. See what happens right here. You definitely don't want him blocking air or double teaming the guy who's blocked. So again, all sorts of bad here. Running back, double team, quarterback getting hit, bad decision, just a bummer all over the place. And then Booger gets upset with the throw. But again, to me, this is on the pass pro. Yes, the quarterback needs to make a better throw. No doubt about it. You can't throw up punts down the middle of the field. But again, you got to be blocked up here. You can't have a double team versus, and then have another DB running free. So again, without knowing the nuance of what this protection is, but playing with Adam, multiple different stops. He was my quarterback coach in Detroit and San Francisco. I know for a fact that this is not how the running back is supposed to block this. He needs to come back across and scan, and we'll look at it from the tight. But again, there, there's all sorts of space to throw this post. It's underthrown. He throws off his back foot, but he throws off his back foot because he's getting blasted in his face. Now, it's not a great not a great throw by any means. You'd sure love the wide receiver to look. It's zero. Get your head around, look, help him out. But again, decision-making, yes, it's on the quarterback. No doubt about it. But the pass pro is what helps these zero situations. And I don't even know if I call this zero. These guys are not, they're not full on coming. It's zero. There's nobody in the middle of the field, but they're not heating you up with crazy pressure. Again, here comes 32. He's going to be the free rusher to the right. I mean, this is just a, they're bringing six guys. We got seven guys blocking. Like there's just no, I mean, it's hard to fathom how this, how this type of thing happens. We get a little stunt or a little game on the left side of the offensive line. So again, here's the free rusher. Okay. In my opinion, the back needs to come across and take this hit off in any protection, any NFL professional protection. That is what the running back does. But what really happens here is we get a little game on the inside. So we get a little T E with a little outside pressure. Okay. So we're all bad over here, but over here, his read, I mean, he's looking at it. That That's the thing that confuses me. He's looking at it. He sees exactly what I think he sees, but instead he stays over here and helps a double team with the tight end. Like, yes, normally you would want to help a tight end if he needs help, but not at the detriment of a free rusher. So, you know, without being in the quarterback room and knowing exactly what the protection is and what the rules are, I can tell you though, that this little juke move at the top, like that, you, you need to go. He needs to know exactly where he's looking. Both 58 and 25 don't come. I mean, it's just one of those things. And 53, I mean, they're, you know, they're basically only bringing five here. Just all sorts of bad. But again, how they manipulate to get free rushers. I shouldn't say bad. It's great defense by the Patriots. It's terrible pass protection from 
the Jets. And it's a bad, you can tell that they don't understand at the tailback position and the quarterback position about where they're hot. And then this is the ultimate seeing ghosts. They come up, make it look like they're going to pump block you, drop out, and you end up throwing a ball up for grabs. When really, this is the right read, in my opinion. Just a poor throw. Obviously, the fundamentals let you down, throwing off your back foot. But it's not easy to play quarterback when there's a guy at your feet and you got to throw a ball with a little bit of touch. Now, yeah, you don't want to throw it like that. But again, this is just underthrown. That's the right throw, high back five versus this scheme. We'll look at it from the all 22. But again, there's opportunities to take shots down the field. They're just in bunch down here to the bottom of the screen. New England's going to play a box versus that. And what I mean by this is we'll to look at the protection element from the back end. But a bunch is just any variation of three people like this. So you'll see some teams do like a totem pole, but most teams just run straight up bunch, just like this. There's multiple ways to play it on defense, but the most common one is what they call, what most teams call a box. And that's just four over three. And the way that you beat this is you have either two in-breaking routes or two out-breaking routes. Or really three. I'm sorry, three. I misspoke. So you just want to outnumber them. They're basically saying, I'll take the first one inside. I'll take the first one inside. You take the second one inside. Well, you want to run three in the same direction. Well, they don't here. They run some variation of uh, all go at a three by one or all go special, however you want to say it. But that throw is there. We, I mean, you, you, you'd have to say if you have your wide receiver on the outside running an over basically or a number three vertical across the field versus this type of leverage versus that type of player, high back five right there. Yeah, I'll take that chance anytime without with this player not being involved at all. One on one in the end zone versus pressure. Yes, we got it. But now you got to be able to throw it. You got to be able to have your feet set. But again, I don't love this concept by any means. It's just a, a unique way to get to three verticals. We'll see all the switch releases. A little too fancy for me versus the Patriots type defense. But again, that's just underthrown. We people in the NFL make that throw all the time. High back five in the end zone, get a chance to go up and get it. And this is just an odd front. Three defensive linemen, two linebackers. They do what most teams call a 5-0 right here, where it's just those five linemen are going to have those five guys. But Sam feels like it's a huge pressure situation again they get a great stunt see this ridiculous stunt by 53 so again five guys right here and these are the three what i would call d lineman type guys in the d lineman type positions but there's five basically bigs right here what i mean by that is these other guys are db type guys db db type guy db type guy so your five offensive linemen are going to be blocked the five bigs the back is going to scan for the rest. He's going to scan one to a cross like we like he didn't do the last time. But again, right here, we get a ridiculous stunt. Boom, ice pick, come around. All sorts of bad happens. But again, there's there. this is not a pressure. This is a four-person blitz. Not a four-person blitz. Just a four, four rushers. Now, it's a nice stunt. He gets to his feet. Nice job by 50. Getting the inside move on the right tackle. But again, Sam's got to be able to make this throw. Fundamentals let him down. All sorts of bad. All right, that's a wrap. The film says what it says. It's always more than just one person. Yes, Sam Darnold's the one pulling the trigger, throwing it high, making bad decisions with the ball, having issues with his feet, throwing off his back foot, not getting rid of the ball. But it's always more than just the quarterback. Just like it's always more than just the quarterback when things are going really well. But again, it's got to be tethered to the pass pro, the concept, the timing of the game, the situational football. And then you just got to go out there and not see ghosts. That's what it comes down to. You got to understand exactly what you're looking for. Is there a safety in the middle of the field? If there's not, where am I going to be hot from? Where is the free runner? And then your offensive line has to actually give you the correct free runner. But when they do, you got to make them pay. That's how you get people out of zero. It's usually fun to play against zero if you see the field well, if you're seeing it well. If you don't, and you got a bunch of ghosts out there and you can't tell who's who in the zoo and where they're coming from, it's a nightmare. And it was a nightmare for Sam. I think it'll be a great opportunity to see if he bounces back from this or if this hits him into a tailspin and everybody in the league does it to him from now on. So it'll be fascinating. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the support. Have a great one.